Golfers and the game's governing bodies, it seems also at the moment, have always been a bit obsessed with distance and especially how far they hit their driver. And because we know and can easily measure that ball speed is the single biggest factor in determining the distance a golf ball actually carries, it is understandable that players of every standard want to know how far the ball speed they do generate should go. So in this video we run through how far varying driver ball speeds from 100 miles an hour all the way up to the super speeds of over 200 miles an hour should go. Analyse what a good, bad and average ball speed is and look how much of it you need to hit the big drives of 300 yards and more. Welcome to the Golfing Focus channel everybody. Many thanks to those of you who are joining us again and a very warm welcome to those who are watching for the first time. Golfers of all standards have always enjoyed watching golf balls soar into the sky off the tee. And the longer the drives, the more the enjoyment. Once players start hitting the ball over 250 yards off the tee, the sometimes seemingly mythical distance of 300 yard drives starts to come into view. And amateurs often become ever more motivated to achieve a length of drive that they see the very best players on TV hitting on a regular basis. Thanks also to the advent and adoption of launch monitors in the modern game, any player can now understand immediately why they hit the ball as far as they do if they know how to interpret the numbers presented to them. And what it will tell them is that ball speed, in other words the speed of the golf ball immediately after impact, is the single biggest factor in how far a golf ball actually carries. Never to be confused with club stroke swing speed, the linear speed of the club's head geometric centre immediately prior to contact with the ball, a gain of one miles an hour of ball speed can increase drive distance by up to two yards according to Trackman, one of the industry leaders in golf launch monitor technology. So given all the data the experts now have when it comes to ball speed and its impact and distance, we are able to clearly see what ball speeds are needed if we are aiming for those bigger distances of 250 yards and over. And according to flight scope, a ball speed of about 140 miles an hour is needed to drive a total distance of 250 yards but a ball speed closer to 150 miles an hour should carry the ball the same distance. Golfers must also though combine these ball speeds with the right launch conditions to produce the best flight trajectory to achieve these distances. And now, whilst we are focused purely on ball speed numbers at the moment, please take careful note of that last sentence, the importance of which we will come back to again shortly. When it comes to driving distances though, it is very often the 300 yard drive which is the big target for regular golfers. Hit the ball that far off the tee and you'll have a story to tell, and many players spend a full golfing lifetime chasing that length of tee shot. So what number is needed to achieve that almost holy grail of driving distance? To reach the 300 yard mark, a ball speed of over 160 miles an hour is necessary to reach a total driving distance of 300 yards, provided it is combined with an optimum launch angle of between 10 and 14 degrees and a spin rate ranging from 1900 to 2900 RPMs. To carry the ball 300 yards however, an extra 10 miles an hour of ball speed with similar launch conditions would be needed. It is vital however that we are once more clear we are talking about ball speeds rather than club stroke swing speeds here, and also again, as we touched on earlier, how important those launch elements of the previous sentences are. Because while ball speed is the primary determinant of the distance you actually hit the golf ball, it is not the only factor that matters, and it is vital not to view your driver ball speed entirely in isolation. To achieve the 250 yard or 300 yard distances off the tee, or any distance for that matter, your ball speed must be combined with the optimal launch conditions, otherwise you're going to be wasting some of that hard earned ball speed and leaving some extra yards in the table. And what is meant by launch conditions in short, is that the launch angle and spin rate you combine with your ball speed are in the optimal range to produce the best flight trajectory and roll to achieve the maximum possible carry and total distance. To put it another way, to achieve the maximum possible carry and total distance, a golfer must produce enough ball speed and get the ball up in the air as quickly as possible and not have much spin on it. Luckily, in today's era of very accurate launch monitors, the experts have been able to work out what the optimal launch angle and spin ranges are for each ball speed. And this handy table, produced by Foresight Sports, another leading launch monitor manufacturer, details the best launch conditions for driver ball speeds 
from 100 miles an hour all the way through to 210 miles an hour. So, as we can see, to hit their drives at carry distance of 250 yards, a golfer must not only generate a ball speed of around 150 miles an hour, but also launch the ball at an angle between 10 and 14 degrees while keeping the spin rate down to between 2,000 and 3,000 RPMs at the same time. Meanwhile, you will notice that while the launch angle range given to hit the ball 300 yards is the same as that quoted to drive 200 yards, the spin range has come down 100 RPMs which helps to emphasise the impact of launch conditions on driving distance. Indeed, to illustrate this point, Tour Experience Golf recently conducted an experiment on how much speed is required for 300-yard drives, and the results superbly illustrate how much launch conditions affect driving distances, independent of ball speed. As we can see in the numbers of the two drives, where the ball speed was almost identical, there was a difference of almost 25 yards in carry distance and 28 yards in the total distance, simply because of the six degree increase in launch angle and 1,107 RPM reduction in spin rate. So as this example brilliantly shows, you have to combine your ball speed with the right launch conditions to ensure you're getting every last yard out of your drives. Because it could, as this data shows, be the difference between you reaching the 300 yard driving goal and falling short of it. To clarify also why a range of launch angles and spin rates are given, it is because, as we all know, each golfer's swing is unique, and as such the exact optimal numbers for these elements are slightly different for each player, and are also dictated by the player's club stroke swing speed and attack angle at impact. The figures and flight scopes table, however, will give you an excellent benchmark guide, while the rough rule of thumb it is always handy to remember when it comes to maximising your distances off the tee is launch it high, and spin it low. So if you find yourself wondering how far does or should a certain ball speed go, whether that be 130 miles an hour, 140, 150, or the very high numbers of 160 miles an hour and above, it's critical to recognize that if that ball speed is mixed with the wrong launch conditions, i.e. high spin or low launch, you will not be achieving the distances, which according to your single ball speed statistic, it seems you should be. If you follow golf content and social media at all, you'll be forgiven for thinking that the vast majority of golfers are all driving the ball over 300 yards on a regular basis. As a result, given the numbers we have already seen from Foresight, you therefore anticipate that a lot of amateurs are getting over 160 miles an hour ball speed, and if you're not reaching that number yourself, then you're not doing very well. No matter what you read on Twitter or see on YouTube though, you can rest assured that this is not the case. Over 132.6 miles an hour is a good driver ball speed, as it is above average for male amateurs, according to Trackman. This is still 7.5 miles an hour less than the 140.1 miles an hour the average player could achieve, though, by hitting the ball at an optimal launch angle and spin rate. A good ball speed for the average lady golfer, meanwhile, is estimated to be over 100 miles an hour. Once again, these numbers point to the importance of the launch conditions a golfer adds to their ball speed to get the maximum distance they are capable of. So we would again urge you not to look at this or the following average ball speed numbers in total isolation. But if we do focus purely on ball speed for a moment, we can see from these stats, again provided by Trackman, where various ball speeds sit in the spectrum compared to other regular amateur golfers of different handicaps. To put these ball speed numbers into a bit more context, the average ball speed on the PGA Tour in 2022 was 171.86 miles an hour, while for the 2023 season to date, the average stands at 172.73 miles an hour. Two-time world drive champion Kyle Berkshire, meanwhile, recently smashed an incredible ball speed of 236 miles an hour, which although not an official world record, gives you an idea of the ball speeds being achieved by the very longest hitters who specialise in long driving. These are ball speed figures the average golfer should not be overly concerned about, though as they are the ones achieved by golfers whose full-time job it is to hit the ball a long, long way. Therefore, if you find yourself recording a ball speed of 135 miles an hour, the stats amongst us mere mortals would say that is good. And if you find yourself reaching the 150 or even 160 mile an hour marks, those are definitely fast ball speeds for amateur players. Because if you're hitting those sorts of fast ball speeds, the 300 yard driving distance mark may be a reality rather than a dream for you one day. Just remember though, no matter what you hear or read, 
only 0.1% of amateurs drive the ball over 300 yards on average. So if you're not reaching the high ball speeds, you're in very good and a lot of company. One key thing to bear in mind though when it comes to these ball speed stats. While they are superbly accurate and are the result of a huge amount of work and the expertise of the major golf launch monitor manufacturers, they do not take into account one key factor that any regular golfer knows has a major impact on distances. The weather. Trackman's numbers, for example, were based on a golfer playing in 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 75 degrees humidity conditions with no wind. In other words, perfect conditions. So although they provide a great and accurate guide, don't forget that the actual distances you find yourself driving the ball in the course are also going to be much affected by the conditions you are playing in, no matter what your ball speed number and launch conditions are. We hope you found this video helpful. Please check out our other great videos on Golfing Focus, and most importantly, as always, enjoy your golfing.